On ET now, let's connect with uh, Navneet Manoj, Chief Investment Officer with State Bank of India, Mitchell Funds. Navneet, good to have you back on ET now. And Navneet, at the outset, my compliments because in the month of August when we interacted, uh, you were the only bull in the town, and that bullish call clearly has worked for you because some of your schemes are now outperforming uh, the industry average, and they're in the top quartile. Uh, so, do you think the outperformance what you've reported this year that's here to stay? Yeah, in terms of timing, uh, probably I think we got it right sometime in May or June. We thought that uh, amidst the environment of gloom, I think market had turned to bearish. People were not looking at uh, uh, the reality versus the valuation. And we thought that uh, central banks uh, would, will probably do more quantitative easing and most likely will take the tail risk away. Also, we were more positive on, on the uh, domestic front and, and we thought that government would take right actions. It may not be due to the conviction, but I think the compulsion would ensure that whosoever is there uh, in the government, they would take, they will have to take positive actions, and that has precisely happened over the last couple of months. Uh, we've seen the action that might have been driven by the uh, data points. I mean, we saw IIP falling to zero percent or below, and we saw GDP close to five percent. We saw uh, rupee really crumbling and we saw uh, S&P threatening with a rating downgrade. But all these factors resulted and then of course the whole media hyperbole on, on, on several issues. All this resulted in government uh, taking the charge and then coming out uh, with, with, with very decisive measures. And then uh, uh, we have seen the global investors putting in money. Our view was that on a relative basis India was looking attractive. So while we all focused on what's wrong with India, we didn't realize that everywhere else in the world there are severe structural issues and for a relative value investor sitting in New York or London they would find that India with a 6% GDP growth with double digit uh, several companies which can deliver double digit earnings growth and also uh, probably a far more deeper uh, liquid market uh, a lot of money could flow in and then that is the that, that's a view that has uh, gone right for us. Navneet, uh, we've been uh, the best performing market in the Asian basket from the start of this year. Is there more steam left to the rally? There could be some more steam left. Of course, it will depend on, on incremental data points. I mean, of course, the corporate results and various other factors. But uh, the rally that we have seen so far has been driven by two large factors. One is the global liquidity that has helped in taking off the uh, taking the tail risk off the table. And second is, is the policy measures that we have seen the uh, probably uh, after a long time, we have seen government acting very decisively uh, to tackle some of the long pending issues and then tackling, let's say, the subsidy on, on, on the uh, oil front, plus clearing the FDI in certain sectors, uh, tackling the whole issues related to SCB restructuring. And some of these measures have been quite encouraging. So investors are, are, are becoming more positive and we have seen a good rally in the market. Now, if, if the government stays on this path and I don't see a, a major risk coming in from the global markets, probably we can have some more uh, upside. We have seen a big rally. So when you talk about, let's say, Nifty from 4,800 to close to 57, 5,800 now, obviously market is likely to consolidate. And then probably we can see, uh, uh, depending on the measures that we see from the government, some more upside. Mm. Amit, uh, it's been a swift move for, for benchmark indices from 4,800 to 5,700. Uh, at, uh, at the current juncture, how exactly to your mind margin of safety is positioned and what are the kind of levels you think Indian markets could touch before end of this financial year, which is FY13? We are far more bottom-up investors. We look at individual companies and don't take macro call on index, but uh, I, I, I think I won't be surprised, I mean, if we see another probably 10% upside or so at, at, at a broader level. And But the individual, uh, at a company level, the dispersion could be high and, and we may see probably a, a, a better return coming in from uh, mid and small caps going forward as is uh, so far the uh, rally, there's not much of difference between the rally that we have seen in large caps and in mid and small caps but as market gets more confidence and markets gets higher liquidity and then people get more confident about the the tackling of, of uh, economic issues going forward we might see more money chasing uh, uh, those stocks which are which are relatively more cheaper so that you can find the more value uh, price arbitrage in mid and small caps so probably they can deliver better returns going forward 
What about defensives then, Navneet? Because they've performed in the rally so far. What is the next big sector then to, big on, uh, to bet on? So obviously the whole, uh, most of the investors were betting on defensives, uh, which, uh, which fall in, let's say, consumer, pharma space, private sector banks, uh, some in IT. So th those were the plays that most of the people were looking at. Given the macro challenges, uh, both in the domestic economy and the global markets, that was the right bet. I mean, it was difficult to look at uh, valuations or probably something which, which is looking cheap alone, but, but far more emphasis was paid on visibility of cash flows, the stronger balance sheet, and probably where you could see earnings growth with, with far more confidence. But anything which was uh, a few months back, you were not looking at just because it was cheap, because you had, there were other concerns. I think that mindset is changing today. And the bias would be towards adding more cyclicals into the portfolio as uh, whether it's the outlook on interest rates, whether it's the outlook on the uh, whole policy side and the execution side, and outlook on the global side has, has improved uh, uh, quite a bit over the last couple of months. So having said that, obviously the bias would be uh, towards uh, adding cyclical, adding more beta into the portfolio. Mm. So what uh, names within the defensive space, Navneet, are you bullish on? Can't discuss individual names, but as I mentioned that uh, when you're talking of cyclical, so uh, we have positive view on rates, so uh, financials, interest rate sensitive sectors, some bit of consumer discretionary, uh, of course, we have seen a slowdown in discretionary spending, but if you if you bet on uh, interest rates going down and probably a positive momentum in the economy uh, from a law level, then obviously you will look at some discretionary names and also the investment related stocks. So something which is completely, I would say, an untouchable uh, till some time back, even if it was trading cheap because you were worried about the the balance sheet, you were worried about all the execution issues and then and the policy environment in the country. Uh, they are getting addressed, not fully. Of course, we are yet to see real action on, on the real economy front. But the, the government seems to be moving in the right direction. And with, with that view in mind, obviously, we'll look at some investment-related stories going forward. Navneet, large cap infra has had a rough ride, but uh, you've become bullish on some of the names like a BHL. Is it the right, right time then to invest in infra? As I said, I mean, I can't discuss individual names, but uh, we are actively looking at quality asset owners. We are actively looking at if, if there is a revival in the investment cycle, who could, the, who could be the beneficiaries. Of course, you have to be very careful about individual names. Over the last several years, several of the balance sheets have got broken uh, quite a bit. There are severe issues in, in terms of several balance sheets, several of, of, of these companies. So you have to be very careful and very choosy uh, within them. As I mentioned that the policy measures that we have seen in last few months are, are cannot address all the issues that the, the, uh, the whole sector has been grappling with last few years. But with a positive view on commodities, as I mentioned that we have positive view on interest rates, we, have a, we think that the government is taking right steps and hopefully in the next couple of quarters if the cycle revives, then yeah, some of the plays that uh, we would be looking at with, within the sector. And uh, Ravneet, uh... Finally, earnings so far, what do you make of the initial set of numbers which have come out? So we think that in next, my macro answer would be that in next one or two quarters, we are going to see bottoming of the uh, corporate earnings cycle. The downgrades that we have seen in last four to six quarters are probably coming to an end. Uh, rupee is likely to stabilize. We have positive on interest rates, as I mentioned. Global commodity prices should remain soft. And if we see a, a better policy environment and better execution, then the, the, both the revenues as well as on the margin front, things may should start uh, uh, looking positive. Uh, maybe another two quarters of, of pain, but from March uh, 2013 onwards, we should look at uh, a more positive cycle of.